Hi everyone, it's Jerry. This is round one from the second annual Sinkfield Cup 2014 between Maxime Vacher Le Grave and Magnus Carlsen. We have this tournament taking place in the United States, St. Louis, Missouri, and this is now home to the strongest ever chess tournament. The six players competing here have nearly an average rating of 2802. So let's have a look. We have Maxim on the white end in this one, opening with e4, Magnus replying e5, knight f3, knight c6, and d4 enters the scotch opening. And now on move 4, black has a decision, opting for bishop c5. A couple other options include bishop b4, knight f6. I'll just touch on one of those two, briefly. If knight f6 and white so chooses, can enter a very sharp theoretical battle by capturing on c6 and following with e5. And I am just scratching the surface with this line right here. The theory goes on. That's not to say after bishop c5, this cannot enter sharp play. In fact, of the first three games from round one, this game here is the sharpest. So what to do? Well, first and foremost, the knight is under fire. We have the counterattacking knight b3, bishop b6, knight c3, knight f6, and queen to e2. Okay, so this is already... An important point in the game. White is prepping e5 to disrupt the knight's position. And there are also a couple other things being said with this queen to e2 move. For one, it's a bit awkward to now move the light square bishop. And because of that, castling kingside will not be so easily accomplished. I believe at this point, when you play queen to e2. If I'm playing on the black side, I would I would interpret it as, well, white is probably going to castle queenside. Something like a bishop pin and a quick queenside castle, placing the rook on a half open file, not a bad idea. So as black, how can you maybe try to punish this awkward placement of the queen where she's obstructing the bishop and castling kingside is now not so smooth? Well, the move played in the game is a5, which is looking to disrupt the knight, for one, on b3. Knights on these highlighted squares are often inconvenienced by rook pawn pushes. We're close to having that happen, but maybe this pawn has additional ideas. Maybe once it gets to a4 and kicks the knight, maybe it could then push even further with a3. And if he's on that a3 square and the king is over here, if this is the white king's home, you can be sure he will be forever a long-term asset for black. Very uh, annoying pawn to have to cope with. This can be very disruptive to a, a king's position, having a pawn with such depth. So I think this is... One of the ideas, not just to attack the knight, but maybe even to look further and uh, be disruptive to what may very well turn out to be the white king's home, the queen's side. Now, one might think to themselves, well, after a5, if I really want to just stop the knight from being kicked, I could do that. I could play to a4. That is true, but notice what squares you give up. The b4 square in particular, this knight will certainly be inconveniencing the white side in some form not so easily kicked now that the pawn has committed himself to a4. There's no, no going in reverse, of course. Well, we don't have that. We don't have a4, a prevention type of move, but white is consistent. Following through with e5, throwing a question to the knight, where is he going to go? Nowhere. Black castles and says, you could take my knight. I'm going to focus more on development, looking for ideas of rook to e8, pinning the queen to the king. Well, white grabs the knight, and one might think the follow-up is the immediate rook to e8, but that is not correct. An immediate rook to e8 would allow for bishop e3. The queen is saved. 
This is the pinned piece, but it's a pinned piece that can simply not be exploited. However, the trick here is to first play a4 to be consistent on the black side as well. a5, a4, and now what to do with the knight? Well, if he's to move, the only safe square is d2, and only at this point do you play rook to e8. There is now no bishop e3. You need to save the queen, so you must block, and now this is the pinned piece that, in this case, can be exploited with d5, and it is certainly black at this point who is in the driver's seat. Lead in development, already castled, the white king, still in the center. We don't have this, however. After a4, it is not knight d2, but rather knight d5, similar to how black ignored the threat on the knight on f6, white is doing similar, ignoring the threat on the b3 knight. Centralizing the white knight, and maybe even looking forward to knight e7 uh, checking moves. Okay, so how to re how to play here for black? Rook to e8. Notice that if you are grabbing on b3, you may have some trouble on the black side. Knight e7, you cannot capture this knight. You must play your king to the corner. If you're capturing, you're in big trouble. The fork. So if you are as black at this point to capture the knight. You have to live with the fact that this knight can camp out on e7 for a while. King here, pawn takes, king takes. This can turn out to be very annoying to the black side. Bishop h6, he's immune from capture all of a sudden. It actually turned out to be made if you're capturing that bishop. Just showing one quick line. That's check, that's checkmate. This, in fact, this line that I'm showing right here, where black captures on b3 instead of playing rook to e8, the move in the game was rook to e8. If you are capturing on b3 and allowing this, this variation I'm showing is in fact still good for black, surprisingly enough. You could go down this road here, where after knight takes knight, you don't have to do anything with the knight on c3, you don't have to recapture, you could grab on a2. If you're capturing like this, this is not going to turn out good for white, having to devote the queen to its defense. The best case scenario for white would be to maybe move the rook out of the way, rook to c1 or rook to b1. Only at this point do you capture the knight. And, well, we have the bishop pair, a completely active rook, a queen that is soon to enter the scene somehow. All the black pieces are going to work soon. Bishop a6 comes to mind, and look at the king side. This is a very long-winded variation, and one that can simply be avoided altogether. You don't know if black is able to calculate all of this accurately, or assess this position we see before us right now accurately. But it can be avoided altogether, is what I'm getting at, by first inserting rook to e8, making sure that if knight e7, we can take him out immediately. So this is the move that is in fact played, rook to e8, bishop e3, only after uh, white is in a defensive position, and now a pin here, do we capture on b3. Pawn takes knight, queen g4, there's only one way to defend the mate threat, g6, and now bishop c4, need to move forward with development. White is not going to be castling queenside now that this file is half opened. So bishop c4 preparing to now kingside castle. One day there can even be ideas of capturing on f7 and maybe somehow getting at h7. If you could imagine the queen already on the h file, some tactical shot capturing on f7, luring the king towards the center and then grabbing over here on h7. Very active post, the bishop on c4. And notice the times. If I just go back here. Bishop c4, the last move. Notice the times on each side. Both have been playing fairly quick. But this is where we had a huge think. About 35 minutes was spent on this next move by Magnus. If you'd like to, pause the video. See what move Black came up with in this position. Okay, the move played after about 35 minutes of thought, knight b4. 
Very, very sharp move. Looking for a fork on c2. Looking to dis displace the centralized knight. And, well, directing play, really. Trying to grab the initiative here. And what better way than to enter the enemy's territory and throw a very strong punch at the c2 pawn with a devastating effect again, landing there with the fork. Can this knight stick around here? What are you going to do as white? White also thought for about 35 minutes and went forward with capturing. Another move, I believe, is to castle. This is still uh, getting very sharp. There could then be knight takes d5, bishop takes, pawn takes here. Very, very sharp play ensues still. But we don't go in that direction. After knight to b4, we have knight takes knight. And what's the trick? d5. So black is down a minor piece, but with d5, we have two pieces being hit, queen and bishop. That piece will be won back. Queen f4. Defending f6. Wanting to still maintain the most annoying pawn in the world, really, the pawn on f6. Ideas of mate on g7, you want to keep those options available. So, need to get the piece back. D takes c4. Castles. Pawn takes. He's a passed pawn. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a very annoying piece right here, annoying pawn on f6, but so too is this pawn here on c2. They... Both sides should really be looking to get rid of these two highlighted pawns very fast. So as a follow-up, we have now knight d5. He is immune from capture. The trick here is that if the queen leaves to grab the knight, well, this is going to run into mate soon enough. You could just throw in some silly little checks, but eventually it'll be mate on g2. So the knight is immune from capture. And maybe even looking forward to knight e7 check. So as a follow-up, we have rook e6, keeping pressure on this pawn. And this is an important point right here. One might think to, let's say, go for the mate on g7, but you need to accurately assess the following variation. This is not a good choice for white to go forward with this mate idea. Because of rook takes f6, giving up the exchange... If bishop g5, there would be bishop d4. But let's just say knight takes. There's now queen takes. Bishop takes, pawn takes. The queen is here, looking to grab this pawn. Black has eliminated the most annoying pawn, the one on f6, looking to grab on b2. And what pawn remains? The passed pawn on c2. That will be easily defended by bringing the last piece into play, bishop f5. Black is winning in this position. So, it's important not to go in this direction and not be so fixated on material gain, but to accurately assess an ensuing position where this bishop, again, is linked to that pawn, and uh, black would be winning in that variation. Okay. Well, what do we have? We don't have queen h6, but rather queen takes c4, grabbing a pawn and soon looking for another pawn grab. Getting rid of this guy. Bishop takes bishop. Pawn takes. And now b5. Keep in mind if it is the knight who is recapturing, this pawn will live. We could have rook c6. Queen e2. Bishop e6. This pawn cannot be captured. Knight takes we've met with bishop c4. So this is not really a direction to go in. And keep in mind that Black is just uh, a moment away from scooping up the f6 pawn. So it's important, in other words, to capture with the f pawn, keeping the knight central, bringing the rook to life to defend the strong pawn on f6, and still keeping the idea of knight to e7 available. So as a follow-up, we have b5, looking to kick the queen away from defense of the knight. And, well, if queen takes pawn, that runs into a fork. Can't grab the pawn. 
And what else is this move doing? It's paving the way to place the bishop on the best diagonal, the corner to corner diagonal. So it's queen c5, bishop b7, the knight is hit. Knight throws in a check, king has to go to the corner. And now finally, uh, the most annoying pawn to white is picked up. Queen takes c2, rook a6, looking to eliminate the f6 pawn. And now rook to c1. So this pawn will fall in exchange for the c7 pawn. If white is trying to do something else, like hang on to this f6 pawn with queen c3, black can be reminding white of the strength of this bishop pointing at g2. The move I'm referring to is a rook move to the d file with rook to d2 to follow. This can be quite inconvenient to the white side. Okay, well, we don't go in that direction. White does not try to hang on to f6, but instead gets the last piece working, the rook on a1, rook c1. Rook takes f6, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, and now queen to d2, looking for a mate in one. And white needs to come up with something good here. Fortunately, there is something good, and the best thing that white can do is force a perpetual check. But it requires some calculation, that's for sure. In fact, about 10 moves need to maybe calculate about 10 moves to see that there is a perpetual check available uh, in this position here for white. And uh, white manages just that. The first move is queen to b8. Again, this is an enormous amount of pressure, just multiple mate threats. A mate in one threat, there's also a mate in three threat with queen f2 check and queen to f1. It's just uh, too much, so white needs to pretty much bail out at this point. As soon as that black queen got active, needs to uh, come up with something, and there is a perpetual check in the following with the following variation. Queen b8, king g7. The queen eventually forces the king to the fifth rank. Now the white rook can contribute. g5, going any further up to board. Probably running into mate with queen h6. Yes, you are. Queen h6, king g4. Probably have multiple mating moves at that point. So you don't really want to go in this direction. Instead, it's g5. You have to sack your rook at this point. Rook takes, king takes. Queen g7. Rook blocks. If you're going here, you're running into mate with rook... I'm sorry, knight to f5, rook takes, queen h6 if the rook blocks, that's a cute mate. And another one would be, well, if king to g4, there's h3, king g3, queen g7, and well, we're going to have mate like this. So, in other words, at this point right here, after check, you can't move your king. If you go to h5, that's actually another, it's not going to lead to mate, but there's a very cool combination that follows. The best move in this position to hold the draw is rook to g6. One last variation, one main variation, is to know what exactly to do after king to h5. Well, this is quite difficult to see, but what would follow is g4, king h4, queen takes rook check, king h3, we give a check, king takes pawn, all forcing every time with check. This is still a mate threat. Two IDs of mate threats, queen g2, if the queen isn't there to block, queen e1. So, queen takes f7, king h6, queen e6, king g5, and we are soon going to be seeing a very cool combination here after king h6, knight f5, king g6, I'm sorry, king g6, queen e6, king g5, and now queen h6. A very cool sequence right here. Um, after queen h6, if king takes knight, e4. And we're going to be winning the queen. That's a lot of moves to be calculating, but um, you pretty much as black need to know that white will be able to give a perpetual 
and you really only need to go as far as if you're playing it as black on the defending side here you really just need to know that if you're going in this direction there will be a way to scoop up this rook with check and at the very least white will be able to have a perpetual and well in this case even more so the main point here is that if you're playing as black you better just go forward with blocking on g6 queen e5 check pawn blocks h4 you could grab the pawn this too would be resulting in a draw it's safe to do that but i think as uh, a playing on the black side here it's better to not allow this knight to get involved with check you would allow just that to happen if you're taking on h4 you invite the knight into the position with check so in order to avoid that king to h5 queen takes f5 king h6 queen f8 king h5 and this one here is ending as a perpetual check and the game is agreed to a draw there's not really much else black can do playing the rook here allows knight g8 king h5 queen f5 and well it's going to be white who's winning this one because again we enter a variation where white is able to scoop up the rook with check maybe even grabbing the bishop soon thereafter so the best that either side can really do at this point or the best that black can do is go back and forth like this and the game is a drawn by perpetual check game is agreed to a draw after the 38th move so a very interesting game out of the scotch opening again the sharpest probably of the three games from round one and as always i hope you got something out of it take care bye